have one manuscript of the Quran from the seventh century. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? By Allah, by Allah, if we don't have over a thousand manuscripts, over a thousand. If we don't, if we don't, I'm going to show you pictures. Mansoor, where are you? We're going to get pictures. Okay, bring them here. Bring them here. We're going to show you pictures. We have, we have the entire Quran. We have the entire Quran from the first century of Islam, which is the seventh century in Husseini Mosque in Cairo. This guy is a compulsive liar. Yes. Okay. We have the entire Quran. Entire Quran. I have the Quran from the seventh century in my possession, in my collection, in my house, in London, in Edgeware. I don't want to tell him where I live. Okay. Okay. Show me the pictures of these manuscripts as soon as possible. Now we have the entire Quran from the first century of Islam, which is the seventh century. We have parchments of the Quran exactly the same as the Quran we read today in our hands. There is no question about the Quran. On top of that, what do the scholars have to tell us? This guy is still failing his PhD. How long has it been now? Okay, it's not important. It's not important. No one important. He attempted a PhD and he failed. Now, now, I'll tell you about I'll tell you about people who were successful in the PhD. Angelica Newworth, she's a German scholar of the Quran, a non-Muslim scholar. She states in the Cambridge history. Can you pay attention? Can you pay attention? In Cambridge, in Cambridge companion to the Quran, Angelica Newworth, a German historian of the Quran, writes that the traditional view that the Quran is preserved as it was delivered by the Prophet is accurate. Yeah. And and also the Christian scholars, Montgomery Watt and Richard Bell, they stated the Quran we have today came from Muhammad, directly from Muhammad. Page 53 of his book, An Introduction to the Quran. Now these are, these are parchments. This is tip of the iceberg. From the seventh century. Handwritten. If he can point out one difference, one difference from this manuscript with our Quran which we read today, I said that I will become a Christian. On top of that, if we produce Greek manuscripts from the third and the fourth century, and if you can show us that they read the same Bible today, again I will become a Christian. Now, ladies and gentlemen, did you notice that he didn't even address my point when I asked him a question? That proved to me that you have what Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John wrote in word. In word, he didn't answer. No, he doesn't have it. You know why? You know why? Cut my time. How much time? Time is up. Time is up. Okay, folks. First and foremost, he's giving you, he's looking, he's showing you these manuscripts. Let's see what it says from Jeskin Meinke in Hall. And this is the German that he's referring to. No, I'm not These are in addition, we I'm offer thousands, lots of fine art, artist graphics, and historical photography. This is not the Quran from the 7th century. This is not been dated by, the, by not only experts who are doing the dating on this. This is only from Islamic sources. That's why we doubt it. And that's why, folks, you need to be careful. Because even the manuscript evidence we have for the New Testament, we do not just take one person's name for it. We don't just take one person's word for it. It has to be peer review. Where is the peer review for these manuscripts? Show us a peer review that is acceptable in the West for the dating of those manuscripts. More than that, folks. Why is it we don't have a proliferation of these manuscripts? We can go on all day talking about manuscript evidence. We cannot come to any conclusion here. So let's go and look and see what the Quran says. And let's ask again, is this a book for today? Yes. That's the question we asked, and that's what we're going to continue asking. Look at the references in the Medinan surahs. Look at the many violent verses in the Medinan surahs that talk about slaying the unbeliever, cutting off the heads of the unbeliever. Surah 47, Ayah 4. Surah 4, Ayah 34, that we've mentioned many times here at Speaker's Corner, that allows a man to beat his wife. Surah 5, Ayah 38, that allows uh, they stink to cut off the hands of thieves. Even if you want to quibble about the dating of the manuscript, are those verses relevant for today? Do you want us to start doing that, following that revelation in the 21st century here in Britain today? We don't find verses like that in the New Testament. 
written much earlier, 600, 700, I would say even 800 years earlier. We don't find Jesus Christ saying anything like that. Jesus Christ is very clear that we do not use violence. Jesus Christ is very clear that we are not to beat our women. We are to love our wives like Christ loved the church. Jesus Christ was very clear that as Christ was willing to die for the church, so that we must be willing to die for our wives. Now show me verses like that in the Quran. Show me the relevancy of the Quran for today. That's why we ask for this debate today. Is it relevant for you? Do you want that kind of scripture to follow today? Do you want a scripture that eradicates anybody that stands in the Prophet's way? Look and see what the Prophet Muhammad did to the Jews living in Medina there between 624 and 627. Look and see if that's a model you want for today. And I give you Jesus. I give you his model. I give you the New Testament. I give you the Gospel. And it is that material that we're going to prove is much more relevant than his Quran. Ladies and gentlemen, have you noticed he has shifted the debate altogether to another topic now? Which is relevant, the Quran or the Bible of the 21st century? We were debating that was whether, the whole reason whether, for this debate. We were debating whether the Quran and the Bible are the words of God. He has shifted the debate altogether. I will address this point. Even though he has lost the debate, as it's clear, I have I have picture, I have a list of the Quran from the first century. You can find the list. Islam, Islamic hyphen awareness.org. There's a website. It lists all the Quran from the seventh century. And once you see the list, please come back next week and tell this man that he's a liar. Tell him he's a liar. Okay. And, and wait, wait, wait. And look at the academic peer. Look at, look, at, look at the academic, look at the academic opinions on these Quran. Now, all of these points he mentioned are irrelevant. You know why? If the Quran is the word of God, then it's the word of God. Whether it's violent, non-violent, peaceful, loving or not, it's irrelevant. It is, if it's from God, then it has to be obeyed. All these points are irrelevant. But, but, he failed, he failed to show us why the Quran is not the word of God. He made many claims, and all of these claims will be responded to. I'll give him one, one response from the Bible. He believes, you go another 15 minutes? Okay, no problem. No problem. I know he struggled. I know. The book is open now. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 1 to 3, in the Old Testament, I know what he's going to say. Old Testament is not relevant to us anymore today. We don't follow the Old Testament. We don't follow the Old Testament. Thank you. Fine, fine. I'm, but, but when it comes to proving the divinity of Jesus Christ, his virgin birth, his crucifixion, his sacrifice for the sins of Israel, they go to that? They go to that? Old Testament. Old Testament. Old Testament. Wait, 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 wait. Now let's go to the violence of the Old Testament. The Old Testament tells us God of the Israelites commanded the Israelites to go into the cities of Amalekites and slay without mercy. It is there. Slay without mercy men, women, children, suckling infants, and camel, donkey, and ass. All of these things you are to slay. My question is, what did the camel, dogs, and donkeys do? Why should they be killed? Okay, number one. Number two, this is applicable for the Christians today. Paul, in the book of 2 Timothy 3.16, and this is the New Testament, which is what you follow today. Paul, respond to my point, yeah? Don't run away. Respond to my point. Paul stated, all scripture is God-breathed and is good for correcting righteousness and educating. All scripture. And Paul was specifically referring to the Old Testament. If that's the case, then those mass murdering, killing, annihilations, and genocides in the Old Testament are applicable. You know why the Christians in early modern Europe were burning witches? Why they were burning heretics? 100 meters away, there were hundreds of heretics burnt here. In, in you know, Tyburn, Tyburn Corner. Time okay. Now respond to my and then point. I will respond Why very is the clearly. Old Testament not relevant to Paul's well, Listen, we're not going to follow your agenda, but I will I'm answer not, that. What? We're not, agenda, we're not, just so they know, the